boarding an X3 is quite difficult to start off and it's a very complicated process, but once you get past that it can be a lot of fun. Just look, we just got a Corvette for free. Before we get into boarding, one of the easiest pirate activities you can partake in is enslaving and selling off astronauts that you find. So when a ship is abandoned, in this case the steam lift was abandoned, the pilot will jump out and they will fly in their spacesuit to the nearest station. So in this case, this is the dune lizard that was abandoned. He's flying over to this water purification water plant. Purification. And once an astronaut reaches a station, they're going to board it and you won't be able to, you won't hear from them ever again. So if you happen to see an astronaut, you can go pick them up. And all you need to do that is the cargo life support system, which I have installed on my Corvette. If you have a TP class transporter shuttle, like a lat gunship or a U-wing or a Lambda shuttle, then it will be built in by default and all you have to do is just pick up the astronaut you don't have to get the upgrade but for other ships like a Corvette like the one I'm flying you need to get the upgrade and I don't think you can put it on fighters but I honestly haven't tried it so just fly into the astronaut when you have the life support even though he's not hostile to me he doesn't know that so you can see we have the passenger on in our cargo this is my Corvette's freight right here under people. This is not a Marine, it's a passenger. You can click on it and um, eject him if you want, but what we're gonna do is sell him into slavery. So to do that, you need to find any kind of base that, that sells and purchases slaves. So for example, a pirate base right here is purchasing slaves. And as you can see in Star Wars LU 1.2.8, I've made slaves worth one and a half million dollars so that this is actually a viable way to make money and play the game. Because previously they weren't worth nearly anything, so there was no point in going through all this trouble. So let's head over there and let's dock at the pirate base. So something important to notice that even if my relations with the pirates is negative five here because I've been doing combat missions and wiping them out, most pirate bases will still let you dock at them as long as you haven't attacked that base itself. So as you can see it granted me docking, but something really important that you must remember to do is you need to set your you need to turn off your ship's turrets because your turrets are going to go light up that station as you approach it and once you attack the station it's going to become hostile towards you. Well, truly hostile towards you, not quasi-friendly with you like it is now, and it, will let, it won't let you dock anymore. So right now it's letting me dock, even though, you know, I don't have good relations with the pirates. Business is business as far as they're concerned, and I'm not entirely sure how it works, but they're letting me dock, and I'm going to sell this guy into slavery. As long as I don't shoot at the station. As you can hear, the game thinks I'm in combat with the station, but we're just going to dock with it like normal and we shouldn't have any problems. Other pirate ships that might be docking with this station will shoot back at you as well, but as long as you don't hit the station, you should be fine. So, we don't have any slaves in our cargo bay, we have a passenger. To convert the passenger, we need to go to our ship's freight menu. So let's go to our ship and click on him and you'll see we have the enslave option. So now we have slaves in our freight bay. We don't have a passenger anymore. And it's an illegal wear, so the police are going to come after you if they find, find you carrying this. So now that we're at the station, we can go ahead and sell our slave into slavery. And this is a different save because there was an issue with the number of wares on this station because I didn't do an export-import to Star Wars LU 1.2.8 from the previous version. So there was just a glitch, but this is what it will look like in 1.2.8 when you properly do an import-export or start a new game. And as you can see down here, just made one and a half million credits by selling that poor fool into slavery. Uh, that former pirate who, who was invading the Empire down here in Jupiter 3, and we now sold him to slaves operating up here in this part, I mean slavers operating in this part of the galaxy. So. That's a decent way to make money if you are in good relations with the pirates. And I'm going to move on to boarding ships now. 
So to board and take over a ship, you're going to need soldiers. And those can be mercenaries or marines. It doesn't really matter. There's not really a difference. But in order to have those soldiers on your ships, you are going to need the cargo life support system. So on my Lambda shuttle here, because it's a TP class transporter shuttle, you have the cargo life support system built in. On my Raider Corvette here, uh, I had to buy it and put it on here. Any ship without the cargo life support system cannot carry Marines. You also need the bioscanner. So I have it on my Corvette and I've also put it on my Lambda shuttle. The bioscanner allows you to actually see the stats of the Marines in cargo and on the, the, the ones that you can hire at the stations as well. So you actually need to see their skills when you're dealing with Marines. Uh, to actually know what they're good at and what they're worth when you're putting together boarding parties. So you need those two upgrades and probably a transporter device too. I'll get to that later. But where do you hire Marines? So in Imperial space, I've added Imperial controlled mercenary outposts like so, where you can hire all of these Marines. And in Commonwealth space, that is every other faction, you can find military outposts. And here, they have a bunch of soldiers that you can hire. One weird quirk with X3 is that the New Republic, formerly the Boron, do not have their own Marines. They have military outposts, but they don't have any soldiers for hire. So the green sectors, you're not going to find any Marines at all. Which is strange, because there are Boron mercenaries you can get, and they have voice lines and all that, but I don't know, X3 is going to be X3. So you can get Confederate, Rebel, Republic, Mandalorian, and Imperial Mercenaries as well. You can even hire them from the Pirates. So let's send our shuttle to 18 billion to the military outpost and we're going to hire some Marines. Let's see where he is. So when you're getting started you're going to want to do Corvette boarding. And Corvettes and TMs, TM is the smallest ship you can board, and they're not very common in Star Wars LU, but like this guy right here is a TM class. The VCX-100 and the um, Gazanti Vanguard are examples of TMs. They're the easiest ship you can board, but we're going to start with Corvette boarding for this demonstration. And our... Where is it? Our Lambda shuttle has arrived, so let's trade. Here's all the Marines we can hire. And as you can see in the top right here, they have different stats. And I'll briefly explain what they all do. So fighting is their, like basically their combat value. Fighting determines whether they live or die, and the collective fighting skill of your entire combat team will determine, you know, how much, how far they can progress through the enemy ship that they're boarding. They have to go through different decks and then they have to reach the central computer and hack it. The engineering skill, now I may get, get this confused with the mechanical skill, I forget which one is which, but one of the two, engineering or mechanical, determines their ability to breach the hull of the ship. So some ships have tougher hulls than others and if they can't even get in the ship then the boarding operation will fail and you'll have to restart. So you're going to need sufficient of that skill in order to get in the ship. The other of engineering and mechanical, I just, like again, I forget which one is which, but the other one determines their ability to, to not wreck the ship they're in. So as they're shooting up the inside of a ship, that, that skill determines how much hull damage the ship is going to take. So Marines with a very low mechanical skill, again, it could be engineering, I get them mixed up, will shoot up a ship and it will take lots of hull damage. If the ship dies during the boarding uh, attempt, obviously it's a failure. And you don't want to get a new ship just to have to repair it. So if you have a lot, very high uh, mechanical skills or whatever skill it is, the ship will be more pristine when you finally do take it over. And finally, the hacking skill. Once they fight and cut their way through the ship and reach the central computer, there will be a hacking skill check. So whatever Marines are left surviving, their collective hacking skill will determine whether or not they can actually hack the ship and transfer it over to you. So basically all of these skills are important, but I'd say fighting is the single most important one. So you can have a Marine that has five-star fighting, like, let's see, I think there was one. Yeah, so this guy, 
This one with 80 fighting, even though he's terrible at the other skills, he will cover for other marines that are less proficient at fighting that can hack. So if this guy and another marine make it to the final computer and the other guy can hack, this guy might keep him alive because it checks the marine's collective fighting skill. So basically you need to have good fighters on your team. But what I like to do is get into boarding a little later in the game rather than early game. That way I can train them all up once. So I like to buy out an entire military outpost. So let's let's hire all of these guys onto our Lambda shuttle. So if we check our Lambda shuttle in the freight, you can see we have all of these Republic Marines. And if we trade with the station, so this is trading. One star marines like this. Now, I'm going to refer to marines as like one star marine, two star marines, or like five star marines. What I'm saying is I'm referring to their overall score, which doesn't really have an effect. Overall score isn't an actual metric that matters for boarding, but it's a it's like an average of all of their skills. So as you can see, all these marines are like zero to one star marines in general. Even though we have this this one up here that's a superstar fighter, and we can actually use him as is just for that fighting skill, he's still a one-star marine because he's trash at everything else. So I like to not do boarding with anything less than two-star marines, and you can train them up in two different ways. So when you actually board a ship, any marine surviving at the end of the uh, end of the mission, so when you capture the ship they will have gained fighting experience. So their fighting skill is going to go up with each successful mission. If they die, well, they're gone, right? But in order to get the other three skills up, you have to train them at a military outpost or wherever you hired them. A lot of those stations where you can hire Marines also let you train them. So this is the trade menu for that military outpost in 18 billion. And you can see this whole category here is Marine training. So these are the Marines that are already on our Lambda shuttles. So you can train specific skills like hacking, mechanical engineering, or fighting, but I like to do train all skills. And quick, normal, advanced is basically quick will just train them a little bit and it'll be over quick. And advanced will be it'll train them a lot and it'll take a long time. I like to just buy out an entire base, go to all skills, advanced. And you can do it quite quickly with the keyboard. And it will take some time. If you actually want to see the progress in real time, you can go to, let's see, 18 billion military outpost. If you hit enter shift one on it, it'll add it up here in the corner. It'll pin it. You can pin two things to your, they're called monitors on the game. So like this or mine, if I do shift two, it appears up there in the top right. It'll render if it's in sector and it won't if it's not. But anyway, we have this military outpost up here. We can quick access it like that. It's just a cool trick you can do with anything. You can put your headquarters up here. But if we go to info, so not the trade menu, the info menu on that military outpost, you will see in real time as they get trained. And it takes a long time. So at the end of a single run of advanced all skills, your Marines will have about two stars in overall. So they'll be considered what I call two-star Marines. So two-star Marines are basically what you should have to start. Like I said, you can go around, so let's see. We can shop around and find specialists. So let's see, Argon M148 has two military outposts, so it's a good place to check. Of course, we can't actually see their stats if we don't have a bioscanner ship here, but the point is you can find those all-star really high skill fighters and those can carry. Uh, they can make up for deficiencies in your fighting skill. Remember, that is the single most important skill that determines whether they live or die. And with fighting, you can have Marines that are terrible at everything else but good at fighting and they can carry the team of other specialists that can do other skills. So anyway, you know, just let them train. It's going to take a long time to, for them to complete. See, they're all still at 0%. It's going to take a long time. And if you further train them from two stars, so once you get all your two-star Marines, once you train them advanced all skills again, they'll go up to like four stars in overall, so all their skills will be quite high at that point. Um, that's going to take even longer than this. So 
I just like having a good pool of Marines I can use. Uh, and I don't get, get into it until a later game anyway. So the sooner you do this, the sooner you'll have mar your Marines for taking over ships. So let's pretend that our Marines all finished training. Now, of course, you only need... So for a Corvette or a TM, you're going to need eight Marines. Those ships hold eight, so a full boarding party is eight Marines. For a M7, I believe it's... I, I don't, actually don't remember what I set it to. 15, maybe 20... Um, M2s and M1s are 22 Marines, if I recall correctly. So you can't really use a Corvette to board a bigger ship or anything like that. But 8 Marines is all you need to get started and board your first Corvette. Um, and you don't have to wait for 8 to finish training. Like I said, if you have an all-star fighter who can carry the team. So you can have your super fighter and then 7 trained Marines. So let's pretend that all our Marines finish training. So we have a bunch of 2-star Marines here. So two-star marines are what you need to get started. So let's go ahead and transfer over some marines to our ship. So let's go to freight exchange since we have the transporter device. If you don't have a transporter device, you can just eject them into space from the Lambda and fly into them to pick them up, or you can dock with the Lambda together and transfer them that way. But we have a transporter device, so let's just take eight of them. So these are the Marines aboard our Raider Corvette. They are all two-star Marines, and this should be what we need to get started. So finding a target, we are going to go after a Corvette. So we need to find a Corvette. So pirate Corvettes, pirates are very easy to board. A pirate Corvette would be the perfect target, but we just need to find an isolated one. So that's where a good satellite network comes in handy. Also satellite monitoring. You can see the enemy ships. You can just check any, any sector that has enemy ships listed until you eventually find one. In fact, Fanon might have one as well. Let's see, they're in the Syndex stage. So they should definitely have Marines, but I guess they don't have any right now. All right, so I found the target. We have a pirate AEG-77 Vigo Corvette in Vale of Delusion, which is this secluded pirate sector down here. Let's go check it out. So when it comes to finding a target, it's one thing to find a an isolated Corvette that you can board. But another thing is you need to have it, you need to know what's on the ship. So there are three upgrades you need to watch out for. And with a freight scanner, so on my Corvette I have the freight scanner upgrade. It lets you scan ships if you find, um, you can actually scan for smugglers in regular like faction space and uh, if they're carrying illegal goods you can uh, hunt them down. But um, what we're going to be using it for now is we're going to scan the ship Illegal scan reported, yeah, yeah, we don't really care about that because who cares, they're pirates, we're in pirate space. But um, we need, so they don't, thankfully they don't have any of the upgrades. So the three upgrades, and these are important, I'll probably put text up on the screen, is advanced firewall software, whole polarizing device, and internal sentry lasers. So any of these three upgrades are enough to deter two-star marines. So if you're using two-star marines like the ones I'm using, they're not going to be able to get past these upgrades. Unless, like I said, you have like a superstar engineer or a superstar hacker um, with your team, they won't be able to handle them. So sentry lasers make the combat level check much higher. So your marines will die a lot easier on the ship. So four-star marines or five-star marines. So four-star marines are marines that have been through advanced all training twice. Two-star marines have been through advanced all training once. Two-star marines will, will die, but four-star marines will have no problem with any of the upgrades. A hull polarizing device will make the check to uh, the, the skill check to get in the ship much harder. So it's basically reinforcement on the outer pl uh, hull plating of the ship so the Marines can't physically cut through the ship and get in. So it'll make it much harder to get on the ship. And the worst of the worst is advanced firewall software because it makes the ship harder to hack. So once your Marines have bravely fought all the way through the ship and reached the computer, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to hack. So unless you have very skilled hackers like four stars or above in hacking, uh, you're not going to be able to hack that ship and your marines. It'll all be for nothing. 
So luckily this ship doesn't really have any of those upgrades and it doesn't, and since this sector is pretty bare, it doesn't really have an escort. These are the perfect sectors to look for pirate corvettes in. Uh, these ones down here at the bottom of the map, Lasting Vengeance is another good one. I've boarded many ships there back when I used to play Lit Cube as well. Um, but if it does have an escort, you know, you can just kill the escort and try to isolate this ship, tell your ships not to attack it. It can be quite hard to manage, but this is where skill comes quite uh, comes into play quite a bit because Lit Cube is notorious for, you know, player skill doesn't really matter. It's just about who has the most ships, you know, who has the bigger fleet. But boarding requires a lot of skill. It requires you being able to isolate a ship, requires you being able to manage its shields, and basically keep very tight control over the entire situation. Um, See, so it's a very delicate procedure. A lot can go wrong. But the last thing I forgot to cover about scanning them. So when you scan them, this ship has Marines on board. And we have one Super Marine who might as well be a Jedi because of his crazy skills. But enemy Marines on a ship, the way it works is they add to the, they're basically eternal sentry lasers. They add to the combat resistance of the ship. So your Marines will have to, the combat check is gonna be a little bit harder. And I'm not sure if my two star Marines can really handle this ship because it has those Marines on board, but it doesn't have internal sentries. So we might be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and try it anyway. That's why we bought so many Marines and trained them all up. So we have extras. You don't wanna just have one team because they most likely will die. And with two star Marines, the whole team probably won't survive the whole trip until their combat rank starts going up. And even with two stars, once you start boarding, their combat rank is gonna go up and they're gonna be able to handle themselves just fine of no losses. So we're gonna go ahead and board this ship. So to do that, you're gonna need boarding pods. So on my ship, I have boarding pods right here. They're technically missiles, and you can buy them at military outposts or on other uh, select stations around the galaxy. You can't manufacture them with a Saturn complex hub. There's no actual factory to build them in the game. You just have to buy them. And the way it works is that there are, let's see if I can turn the uh, game volume down here. So you can board without boarding pods, but that's a terrible idea and just don't consider it. Just don't even think about it. What it does is it ejects your astronauts into space and they literally fly in their spacesuits to the enemy ship and board it one by one. So that's a terrible idea. Only certain ships can fire boarding pods. So this Raider Corvette I have, if I check its freight, uh, great fighter drones. All right, so in the info menu, you'll see boarding pod as a compatible missile. So just check your ships for that. Let's tell our turrets to stop shooting because we don't, we want the ship to be, we don't want to destroy it. So let's tell our turrets to attack fighters or let's see, protect ships. So they only attack our attackers. We want to kill all these drones. All right, looks like most of the drones are dead. So let's tell our turrets to stop attacking again. We don't want to take out this ship. And I have ion cannons on my ship, so fusion beam cannons. Ion cannons do a ton of shield damage and barely any hull damage. Remember, we don't want to damage this hull. I'm also going to add a laser to group two so I can only fire one at a time for precise shield management on this ship. We're just going to let that fighter drone just keep shooting us because it's not doing any damage. So you want to get this ship shield down below, I think it's 10% in vanilla. So I'm going to click on the health bars and turn on numeric display. Yes, it breaks the cockpit, but you need to have it below, I, I don't know if it's five or 10%, but we need to have their shields down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch my boarding pod. So to do that, I can hit M and I can basically install them like a missile. If you look at the bottom left, they're installed as my missile. So if I press the missile launch button, it's gonna launch the boarding pods, but I don't like to do that. That's not a very good way to do it. I'd rather use regular missiles during the operation. What boarding lets you do is if you have boarding pods and Marines on your ship and your ship can launch those boarding pods, you can click on an enemy ship and you'll see a new option called attack launch Marines. And that will launch all your boarding pods at once. So this is actually the hardest part of the whole thing. So once you have an enemy ship and you're alone in combat with it, this is where uh, your Marines can all get shot down. So chaff is a huge issue so i'm gonna go ahead and save the game because so much can go wrong here and this is a good place to pick up and retry things so first we need to check for chaff 
we can, of course, we scanned him, so we know he doesn't have chaff. But for a real ship that has chaff, you're going to need to fire a whole bunch of missiles at him. And you're going to need to either exhaust all of that chaff, or you can use cheap swarm missiles, like the Wasp missile for the Rebels and the Commonwealth, or the Poltergeist missile for the Empire. Those are cheap anti-fighter swarm missiles. They don't do a lot of damage, especially to a Corvette, but they're going to use chaff on it either way and waste all their chaff. So you can shoot a bunch of chaff, I mean, chaff bait all over the place and then launch your boarding pods during all that missile carnage so that the boarding pods have a greater chance of not being shot down. Because boarding pods are technically missiles, they can easily be shot down by any of their turrets or chaff that are on missile defense. And if a boarding pod gets shot down, it's instant death for all five Marines aboard it. So each boarding pod carries five Marines. And uh, those Marines, when they, uh, when they get on the ship, when the boarding pod hits the ship, they're going to work together. So all the Marines in each pod are going to work together to pull their skills to breach the hull. And I remember, I don't know if it's engineering or mechanical that determines that. But if you individually launch them, then they're each going to need to do the skill on their own, and they're definitely not getting in that ship, especially if it has advanced um, a whole polar polarization device. So boarding pods are the way to go. So I'm going to explain what's going to happen. Once they hit the ship, they're going to use their mechanical skill or engineering. Like again, I don't remember which one it is. To get in the ship, once they're on the ship, they're going to use their fighting skill to go from deck to deck and fight, and then they're going to use their hacking skill to hack the computer. So let's get the ship's shields down. I have, let's set our front turret to attack. Looks like it's distracted by the fighter drone. Another good thing to do in these battles is you can use your own fighter drones. Actually, I think you might be able to give them that command. So let's eject some of our TIE droids. Let's eject uh, 10 of them. So we have our TIE droids, let's tell them, so broadcast all ships in the sector, fighter drones, alright, looks like we can't do it, but there is an attack shields option right here, so in the TIE droid or whatever ship you have, you can tell it to attack shields, and it'll only attack shield, it'll attack a ship while its shields are up, and once the shields are down, it'll stop attacking that ship. So if you have... Um, less but more powerful ships than drones such as a uh, corvette backing you up in this fight you can tell it to attack shields and therefore you can bring down ships more stronger than your own this pirate corvette is a lot weaker than my current raider corvette so there's so many considerations you have to make i can easily board the ship with my raider because it's a lot easier but for taking down bigger prey than yourself you're going to need to bring backup into the fight so we didn't need these tie droids i'm going to tell them all to go Well, that's unfortunate. It looks like the ship jumped out, so we need to go find where it went. It probably went to the nearest pirate sector, as they usually do. We just need to find a... Here it is. Pirate Vigo and Lost Order. So this is going to be tricky. You can, you can tell because it, it doesn't have the shields. It's the same one we were attacking. So we need to go after it. I probably could have boarded it back there when I had the opportunity, but I was busy explaining, so it had time to get away. Some ships do jump away. So now we're in pirate territory. This is going to be a lot more tricky. So like I said, a lot of skill is involved in this, so I'm going to eject an extra advanced satellite. We need to not alert all of those fighters, but if we do alert them, we can beat them all in combat. Looks like... Let's see, we've got a harrower over there. We don't want to alert that. We just want to go after this Vigo. So let's chase it down. Looking at the map, it doesn't look like... Okay, no, they all have room. We're going to have to fight off the fighters. So let's tell our turrets to attack fighters. And I need to take out all the fighters. And this... You can use MLCC with this. You can bring in even more backup. It looks like that uh, Corvette had even more fighter drones than before. But we need to get this situation under control as much as possible, because we do not want our Marines getting shot down. I suppose I could have also reloaded the save, but this is more realistic to a situation you're going to get in. Set our turrets to missiles, so we don't have to deal with that. Attack fighters. We're not in any real danger yet. Let's see, whatever this ship is with the 
Mandalorian weapons is giving us quite some troubles. We'll blast it. Not taking too much damage just yet. Probably should have brought better missiles than these. Alright, only a few fighters left. Had to ram that one. Alright, we'll set our turrets to missiles. Alright, so situation is back under control. Let's go ahead and save the game. Always save the game right before you launch your boarding pods because you don't want them to get shot down. So we need to get his shields down. If you try to board it, looks like there's a lot wing I missed. Hopefully it doesn't cause us too much issue. Because if your shields, if the shields are too high and you try to board, then your marines are getting get fried by the shields. All right, I need to break off and attack these fighters real quick. Now boarding is quite a complicated profession. Let's use missiles, take this guy out. I probably should have brought backup rather than just trying to go it alone. Let's see, why are my turrets not shooting that down? It's fire chaff. Alright, looks like a second group of fighters is on us. It looks like another Corvette as well. We might need to bring him back up here. Alright, taking hull damage, but nothing too significant at this point. If we keep failing to shoot down those missiles, we're going to have issues. Let's try and turbo boost her away. Alright, well, this situation has gotten completely out of hand. We might need to find a new target at this point. But, should still be under control. Let's see. As long as... I don't think we need to reload at this point because we have another... Let's see, a nemesis. This is actually a vanilla ship, but it's due to the fact that the Separatists don't have a... They don't have a Corvette in Star Wars lore, so... Or in the mod, for that matter. I don't know if they actually have a Corvette. Let's see. We've got a... Actually, I don't see any of the... Oh, advanced firewall, so that could cause us some problems. But I don't see hull polarization, and I don't see advanced internal sentry lasers. And they don't have their own Marines aboard. So we could board this Nemesis, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll wait for our Tartan patrol cruisers to clear the air. Now I didn't want to bring in the Tartans because they're going to wreck the heck out of this Corvette. And we don't want it taking any hull damage. We want to keep it under control, so I'm, I'm calling off the Tartans, telling them to get out of here. Their turrets are continuing to fire. It looks like the Nemesis got away. So... It, could honestly be anywhere at this point so this may have been we may have lost it at this point boarding is very finicky finding targets is not the easiest thing in the world and keeping those targets is also hard if they have a jump drive so back in veil of delusion i should have jumped when i had the opportunity we're going to go ahead and reload at this point Alright, so we're back in Veil of Delusion. Let's pretend that failed attempt didn't happen. This is that Vigo again, the original ship we were going after. And let's scan it. It has... Right, this one has Marines aboard it. Let's see. It has Marines, but it doesn't have any of those advanced upgrades that'll prevent us from boarding it nicely. So. Let's see, check for chaff. Doesn't have any chaff, so we can use missiles all we want. Let's have our turrets help out in the fight. It's a good thing to be very quick with the turrets. You can hit Shift-C, click Command All Turrets, and hit a number to immediately give your turrets commands. I'm sure there's scripts out there, such as Mars or something, that um, let this happen a lot easier, but for the vanilla purposes, uh, you got to learn how to manage the turrets like that. All right, so now that we're at 10%, I'm hitting two to switch to my second weapon group. As you can see, only one of my three forward lasers is active. We are going to precisely get this ship's shields down below 5%, and we want to avoid hull damage. Oh, it stopped. It's jumping. Okay, let's see. Where is it going? All right, it went back to lost order, so we're going to have to go ahead and do this. 
Let's go to Lost Order. You may also want to have a second personal ship for this that you can switch to because shields recharge very slowly in Lake Cube's universe. Okay, so. We might need some TIE droids. We might need to call in the Tartans again. Let's see. Let's keep shooting them. We have CCDS on our ship that automatically fires chaff when our turrets aren't told to shoot down missiles. And of course it's a Corvette, so it has enough firepower to bring me down as well. So there's a lot... Oh, that's not good. Alright, we're going to go ahead and save. What happened is he shot like a Firestorm torpedo or some crazy powerful missile. And I shot it down and the collateral damage took him out too. So let's go ahead and... We want to get as close as possible before shooting the Marines to reduce their travel time. So let's launch boarding pods. They hit the ship. And to check, I need to keep shooting. They're not on board yet. They are on the outside of the ship. We can go to personnel in the property menu. So hit R. The ship's jumping again. You can see that we have eight Marines on the Vigo. So as you can see, it went to Scum and Villainy, which is the Star Wars sector. So we need to keep its shields down. This is very important. So I don't actually have that sector revealed. So we need to get the scum ability as quick as possible. Because they're on the outside of the ship, cutting their way in. And as the shields are recharging, they're all going to get fried as the shield, you know, if they hit that threshold 10%, or it might be 5%. All right, let's see, where is it? Let's drop a satellite. Of course, I jumped to the wrong gate. Yep, there it is. Okay, so based on the voices I'm hearing, they're already on board. So I'd, I don't really have to worry. Once they're on board the ship, there's not really much else you have to do, except we're in quite a sticky situation here because they are next to a pirate capital ship. So let's see, what do we have here? Oh, that's not a capital ship. That's a, that's a weapons platform. But as you can see, there's the Vigo that we're boarding right here and it's in range of that weapons platform so once we take over the ship we're gonna have issues okay so our marines are starting to die we used to have eight we only have four as they start fighting through the different ships all right looks like those enemy marines on the ship were enough to take it out so two star marines aren't going to be sufficient to take out a ship with this um this many uh enemy marines on it Let's see, scan it again. Yeah, so these enemy marines were enough to deter our two-star marines. So for two-star marines, you basically need to find a ship that has no enemy marines on it and none of those upgrades that give it all kinds of buffs to boarding. And you should be able to board it just fine. Now, there is an advanced technique involving reinforcements where you can send reinforcements over as they die so you know that moment where we had four marines out of the eight on the ship we could have sent another four over to you know buff up our team back to full strength in the middle of the boarding operation but um that's very hard to do and uh, i will be getting to that later it's hard to do for corvettes but you're most likely going to need to do that for bigger ships Something I forgot to mention is Xenon. You cannot, you can board Xenon ships like the Xenon P Corvette. However, they are extremely hard to board. They will just destroy your soldiers. So you need to have like four or five star marines minimum, and they're still going to die on Xenon ships. But you can board a Xenon ship. It's very difficult. Um, you're going to need to use reinforcements at an M7M most likely, but let's go ahead and finish boarding that Corvette. Okay, so we're going in for another attempt. This time we have better skilled Marines, three stars and four stars in fighting, so the fighting skill will prevent them from dying. Let's go ahead and get the shields down. Ah, uh, shoot, the ship's coming to a stop. That means it's jumping. We need to launch. All right, successful hit without them being shot down. Let's get the shields down so when it does jump, the Marines have as much time as possible to get in the ship before we can track it down. Let's see. They are in Scum and Villainy again, so they went to the East Gate. Now, once you have 
skilled marines so I you know you can do two star marines it's difficult but you can when you have four star marines you can pretty much board anything you want without worry all right so they're already on the ship we can let the shields recharge just fine it doesn't matter anymore now that they're on the ship we can stop shooting at it so the ship is going to take hull damage as the fight's going on in the ship and you know bullets are shooting out of the hull and all that as you can see the hull damage is going down if the ship gets destroyed during the boarding process well then it's going to fail so that's why you want to be extremely careful with your ion weapons when when you're initiating the combat So what I'm doing now is I'm luring the ship away from that weapons platform because we don't want to capture the ship and have the weapons platform destroyed. So I'm having the ship chase me away from the weapons platform back towards the gate and hopefully more pirates don't come out of the gate as well. And of course we have to watch our own ship's health. We don't want to get destroyed. All right, so Corvettes will usually only have about three or four decks. So they're at the core. So this is where the hacking skill comes in. So once the hacking skill, I mean, if you have a sufficient total hacking skill among your Marines that are left, then you should be just fine. As you can see here, none of them died. Same Corvette, just reloaded a previous save with stronger Marines. That fighting skill makes a massive difference. All right, so they just took the ship. So let me quickly explain what's going on here. So luckily we're out of range of the... Luckily, we're out of range of the enemy weapons platform. So, why are there spacesuits all over the place? Those aren't our Marines. If we check the ship's cargo bay, our Marines, the skilled ones, are on board. So, it installs a ship life, a cargo life support system. It comes out of nowhere and installs itself on the enemy ship, even if it didn't have one before. So, you can board a ship that doesn't have a cargo life support system on it. These Marines out in space here are those enemy Marines that were on board defending against us. So what you can do is uh, you can actually go find the enemy Marines out in space, and if you save them, they'll just join your crew. So they will be your Marines if you pick them up. So let's go pick them all up. There is a command for collect all Marines in sector in the special command software, I believe. And you can just have a... If you have another ship with you on the boarding operation, you can just tell it to go collect Marines. But because our Marines are aboard the enemy ship, well, the previously enemy ship, my personal Raider Corvette can hold Marines again. It can only hold a total of eight. So let's pick all these guys up. And let's see what we got. Of course, their skills are all terrible. But you can get elite Marines this way. So always pick up enemy Marines. You can always make use of them. And now for the, the next fun part, we need to get this ship out of here. So it has no jump drive. So this ship does not have a jump drive. We need to get it, we're deep in pirate territory. We need to get it back to friendly territory. So something I like to do is if your ship can have a fighter on it. So this, my Raider Corvette actually has a tie defender with it. Let's see, let's tell it to follow the Vigo. I know the docking isn't visible. I might add that later, but we launched our TIE Defender. So it has a jump drive. I'm going to freight exchange my jump drive, let's see, over to the Vigo. I'm going to give it some energy cells too, let's say 200. We're going to tell it to jump to a sector. Oh, I don't know. Where's our home sector? Guiding Star is our home sector. All right, it's jumping out. Now I need a jump drive, so I need to trade with the TIE Defender, get the jump drive. It needs to dock with me again. The fastest way to do that is to beam over to it because it has a docking computer. I can go back to my Raider and insta-dock. So now the TIE Defender is docked. Once the Vigo jumps, all right, we're clear to get the heck out of here. Let's go to the south gate of Guiding Star. Now that we have a Corvette, just in time as the pirates are launching a big fighter attack at us because we're in their home sector. Let's see, where's our Vigo? And here it is, this is our pirate Vigo. So now we can repair it, we can add it to the MLCC fleet, we can reverse engineer it, we can make it our own personal ship. You know, we can do pretty much anything we want with it now. Remember to take your good Marines off of it, so we'll have the Lambda come. I'm gonna put these 
poor marines that I got from the that were previously the enemy marines. I'm going to beam them on the lambda. So all these poorly skilled marines, we will send them to the lambda shuttle. The lambda shuttle can go back to I think 18 billion was what I was using military outpost and train them up. And we are going to get our marines back from the Vigo. So now we have our marines back. Their fighting skill has all gone up, and that will greatly increase their survivability. And that was it. I was going to go into the more advanced boarding of capital ships and using M7Ms, but I think I'm going to have to do a part two for this because that was just such a crazy ride getting this ship. Um, so going after pirates is probably, you know, it sounds good in theory, but because of jump drives and because, you know, pirate sectors are very dangerous, the best bet is probably to go after ships of a regular race. Because because there are things called um, weapons traders. So there are weapons traders. Through, uh, of course, there's not one for me to find. So let's see. Weapon transporters. So in Black Hole Sun, we have a Karelian Corvette that is a weapons trader. So it's like a regular NPC trade ship, but it happens to be a Corvette because it's carrying weapons. These make excellent targets. So say we're at you know the rebels are our enemy and we have you know they're they're going to trade with other races so the rebels can trade with the republic um as you can see in here we have new republic stuff trading with the republic in grand exchange which is a republic sector this is perfect so you can have a rebel ship a rebel trade ship in a republic sector you can be enemies with the rebels. You can go into and be friends with the Republic. You can be uh, go into that sector, attack the rebel ship, board it, and the Republic's not going to care because it's not one of their ships, and there aren't going to be other rebels around to save it because it's not their territory. So going after weapons traders is an excellent idea as well. And they probably won't have jump drives, and they probably won't have marines on board. So I would recommend going after Corvette weapons traders. But you can go after pirates, and like I said, do not go after Xenon unless you are at the end game and you have, you know, superstar marines and you have a lot of experience with this. But I guess I'll have to make a part two later that covers how to use M7Ms because it's a little bit more complicated. And that's it. Don't be discouraged by all my failed attempts. You know, I'd say try this for yourself. It's a very cool way and fun way to get ships. It's very stress-inducing, and that can be a lot of fun in an otherwise boring game of economics and production. And that's basically it.